Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Mist Conceptions. I'm your host, David White. And today we are taking a break from our Misconceptions main storyline to bring you a side quest episode. And today's side quest episode will feature an RPG titled Open Versatile Anime RPG, uh, or OVA for short. This is a really fun system. Uh, like its name says, it's very versatile. You can do so much with it. Of course, it has a lot of tropes and a lot of, you know, little flavor text that kind of lends it to anime. But you could very easily adapt this RPG to superheroes, uh, video game characters. Those are just the ideas that came to my head. But anyways, uh, if you don't know what anime means, because I've been saying that word a lot, anime refers to Japanese-created animation. Uh, I'm... I mean, I'm, I would be very surprised if you hadn't at least seen some influence of anime in t-shirts or toys or something like that. But Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, these are all very famous. Uh, Death Note, those are all very famous animes that are pretty prominent in pop culture. Um, and so this adventure that we're about to embark on is going to be set in Japan and it's going to have a lot of those defining characteristics of anime. You know, a lot of big eyes, a lot of over-exaggerated emotions, the throbbing red vein that pops out of the character's head. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. Uh, the group we played this story with, these uh, these episodes with, are, was really fun and we, we had a really fun time. You know, misconceptions can get kind of kind of down and you know there are some humor pockets in it but for the most part it's a very dreary story like most noir stories are and so if you're feeling down this episode is for you it's a more upbeat episode it's silly it's funny it has a lot of anime tropes in it and I mean, it'll be fun just stick around and wait for it Our anime voices. Yeah, sure. Wait, <laughs> voices. You don't have to do a voice. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to do a voice. Hiroto Yomada. Tagashi. I wish I could say whatever Genji says when he holds. Who da kira kara ga yo ga? I don't know what it actually. Is. <laughs> look at the look yeah. at the. Look. I appreciate it so much. Uh, that was great. I'm trying to remember how to do. Overwatch oh, TM owns Genji yeah. and I don't want to slip the other guy. And we love it. Hanzo. You know, it's funny. Wait, the okay, one okay. Okay. I'm trying to do normal. Like, I can't remember how to do a normal no, British accent. Oh, something can't All of a sudden. Why are you doing a British accent? Because you'll find out. All right. As a, game a normal that's British a, accent, yeah. British. No, mm, I've got no. a little Australian in it. No, no. Mine always devolves into Scottish. <laughs> My, mine always goes to Russian. Into I've been Scottish. I've been to right. That's good. <laughs> you right. The Scots are the best. Just think, you're a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Like you're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard. You're a wizard. Harry. Have you guys? Harry. Have you guys? Every time you talk to somebody, you're just gonna say, "You're a wizard." You're a wizard. Harry. You? <laughs> you're a wizard, David. <laughs> uh, Hello, I am Zuchi Shoruda. <laughs> 
No, the anime or in the dub. This is a dubbed anime. We can't. Yeah, then, then it would be yes, like, "Hello, I am Zuchi." <laughs> We'd have, to have to, we'd have to have a video feed for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it for y'all's entertainment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So Eddie Carlisle. Before we get started, does anybody have? Are you playing a character? No. I'm playing everybody, everybody else. He's playing all the characters. I didn't know if this was a game where GM can participate. No. Okay, that's fine. I never get to participate. <laughs> I never get to play. It's so sad. Whenever somebody wants to be a GM, I'll let him. <laughs> Zach. Hope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is my curse and my duty. No, no, oh, yeah, read over your whatever. Yeah, you probably uh, should know your character. No, I, I just wanted to make sure that Zach wasn't Hana, and I was like, hell no. I, mean, I, will, I will commit seppuku in the first thing to get out of this oath. Guardian. It's just penciled in Zach's character. <laughs> I have found that life beyond will be much sweeter than life protecting this imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Kaiba. Did you say Kaiba? Kaiba. <laughs> Kaiba Seto. Seto Kaiba. You'll never win. Put lights. If you treat your <gasps> cards like that. Cards like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good will triumph. Heart of the gods. What I liked is that nobody like noticed that Yu-Gi-Oh or Yugi transformed into Yami Yugi. Like, I think Joe I once was like, hmm, he looks a little different when he battles. And it's like, he's like six feet, and he was yeah. four feet, and he <laughs> has a totally <laughs> different power. voice. His voice is way deeper. <laughs> You're like, dumb. man, he just looks different. He's so focused. No, he's being possessed <laughs> by this ancient <laughs> Egyptian dude. <clears throat> All right. I pop my pop filter. I'm going to put it back in place. Um, today we are playing the OVA RPG. You want us to start with Bailey first? <laughs> Why'd you? I, I use finger signals for a reason. <laughs> Jaime didn't want us to know what he was saying, but we now we know. Now we all know. Um, but anyways, we are joined by two familiar voices that uh, you should know and love or hate. It's whatever. <laughs> and then we have two new voices that you will learn to love and not hate. So uh, we're gonna start with one of these new voices. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. And I need to look at what I wrote down. And tell us the first anime you ever watched. Okay. Hi, I'm Bailey. And the first anime I ever watched was Iran High School Host Club. Um, and it was what was good. it called? Iran High School Host Club. Maybe I'm saying that wrong. Maybe it's... Oh, I, I mean, Iran. I've just never heard of it. I don't You're know. You're probably doing it right. Oran. Oran. I don't know. It's a really it's dumb, cheesy, girly one, but I love okay. it. Okay. <laughs> what did you like about it? Um, I don't know. It's just funny and cute. That sounds fun. So, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next guest, our next new guest. Who are you, and what was the first anime you ever watched? Uh, hi, I'm Christian. I'm Bailey's husband. Oh. And uh, my tons. first anime I ever watched was Bleach. Way back in the oh, day. Oh wow. Cool. I've never seen an episode of Bleach. I've the first, the first like, two. two to three seasons uh -huh. are okay, and then it just quickly devolves and becomes pretty garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've never really wanted to watch it. I mean, it's interesting. It's, yeah? It's dated. It's not... Oh, is it really? Yeah, it's, it didn't hold up too well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Let's move on <laughs> to our resident hacker who is not hacking. This nope. game. Zach, who are you? And what was your favorite... Or no, what was your first anime that you ever watched? I guess the first anime would either be... Because Pokemon counts as anime, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, either po Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, if I could wake up early enough to watch Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. Or Pokemon. Uh, so those, those are probably the first ones I can't name. I wish Adventure Time was technically an anime, but it's not. Hi, me. Who are you? Uh, what was your favorite? No, Dad Gummit. What was your first anime? Well, I am Jaime, as David <laughs> oh, just wow. gave nice away. Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> um, yeah, I. I can't remember because, like, is it the first anime I intentionally watched as an anime? <laughs> Because that would be like Death Note, but if it wasn't, then it was Sailor Moon, mm. because I was like 
babysat by this lady and her sons watched it and that was in elementary and i remember that that would be the first anime followed quickly by dbz but like i wasn't like i'm gonna go watch anime today i was like i'm gonna watch cartoons so yeah i guess it could be unintentional all right unintentional would be sailor moon okay Uh, so but intentional the first one you said i want to watch an anime it was death note death note did you watch it all the way through yes i have not watched it it was very good and i started reading the manga don't watch the Netflix movie. I've heard. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> I, I heard that Willem Dafoe was like, yeah, I didn't even feel the reason to look at the source material. And I was like, yeah. That's a good show of a uh, of a good show. Why good would show, you? I, I don't understand that. Like, I'm going to make a rendition of some source, but I'm just going to do what I think it should be yeah. without looking. That just doesn't. Man, it sounds sense. like yeah. the Batman versus Superman. <gasps> <laughs> of anime. <laughs> I also have the same name. Worse. <laughs> that was awful. But we'll do that with another podcast. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think mine might have been Pokemon, but I can't remember if I watched Pokemon for first or I watched My Neighbor Totoro first. Totoro. Because I have watched Totoro for nearly all my life, and I cannot remember what year it came out. So if it came out before Pokemon released in America. Look it up, Jaime. If it came out before Pokemon came out in America, then it was definitely Tokyo. Uh, so, yeah. I think it's, it was either one of those two. Because I remember, I had it on VHS. I had like the first three episodes where he gets shocked. And, oh wait, no, it wasn't that one. I had like six, seven, and eight. So I hadn't even seen the first episode. I just saw when he caught Metapod and had a standoff with a Metapod. And I loved it, even though that episode's really boring. <laughs> Just two Metapods using Harden, Harden and not Harden, doing anything. Harden, <laughs> yeah. Harden, James Harden. Oh, oh. go to Harden the paint. <laughs> Hashtag Houston Rockets. All right. Well, like I said, we are playing OVA. 1988. Was when Totoro came out? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, then it was definitely Totoro then. Dang, son. I don't think I've ever, ever heard of it. Wow, dude, you haven't watched Totoro? You haven't heard of Totoro? Oh, man, it's so good. Dude, Studio Ghibli's finest, almost. Yeah. Like, Studio Ghibli is like... It's like Disney for Japan. Yeah. Are they the ones who do that, like, weird wind spirit thing? Spirited Um, Away? Yeah. Yes. Spirited Away. That was good. I I enjoyed it. Yeah, House Moon Castle. Uh, Ponyo. Ponyo. I've seen seen that character. Oh, he's super popular. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's I've like never, I've popular. never, never known what it was. He was in Toy Story three. What's the character? Yeah, he was. I love really? It. Yeah, huh? that was my was favorite awesome. part of Toy Story three. Was Me seeing too. him. Is there one with a cat? <laughs> cat uh, returns. Kiki's. Cat. Yeah, the cat returns. Oh, oh Kiki's oh, delivery service too. Returns. Dude, that one's good. Right. Carrie Elwes plays the cat. Somebody's gonna have to recommend stuff. Okay. Let's just. Sorry, we're not doing this podcast anymore. We're just going to go watch Studio Ghibli films. <laughs> if you have any recommendations for good Studio Ghibli or other ma- anime, you should tweet it at Misconceptions Pod. Why do you not know the Twitter handle for our Twitter? It's I like easy. you saying it. Oh. You're like the voice of misconceptions, oh, you, you crybaby. <laughs> you can tweet us. He now. really forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, No, it's Misconceptions Pod. Yeah. You can tweet us at Misconceptions Pod. Was that good? That's okay. what she said. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just, just you can. I mean, with the with the wonder of editing, you can just make it sound like coherent. So oh, I'm not fine. cutting any of this out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet me so I can watch stuff, and then maybe next time I'll talk about it and how dumb you are for tweeting it, or how smart you are for making a good recommendation. <laughs> Got him. Okay, we are playing the OVA RPG, which stands for Open Versatile Anime oh. Role Playing Game. Um, and we we have a super cliche anime opening with people running in the field going nowhere and nice music in the background and pop vocals and all that. And then we see the title for the show, and it is Mystery at Shimpy Junior High. And uh, the scene or episode opens up on this island. Uh, it's very idyllic. It has, you know, nice Japanese buildings, nice architecture. There's this uh, sacred gate up on the mountain in the middle of town. It's surrounded by water. Um, And we hear the bell ring, and we kind of zoom into town. 
and we see a junior high with all these kids coming to school. They all have on their, you know, the girls have their sailor, uh, not sailor moon, but sailor school outfits, you know, navy blue with uh, white skirts, and the boys have navy blue. Um, no, it's not flipped. What I say? Flipped. You said it's white skirts and blue tops. Oh man, I totally did. <laughs> did I not say it right? No. I said navy. Yeah, navy blue tops and white skirts. Yeah? It's, isn't it the other way around? I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, it's it's most skirts. of the time it's a white top and like a blue or red. White or shirt, blue huh. skirt, typically. Yeah. Well, at Shimpy Junior High, okay. <laughs> it is navy blue with a white skirt. I don't know. Maybe it's different. Anyways, the boys Got are wearing it. matching uh, white slacks with navy blue blazers. Um, white skirts would suck to wear. Hey, man, take it up with Japan. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. Why do I have to wear a white skirt? But anyways, um, we see a girl who is coming out of her house. She's waving to her mom. Bye, mom. And her mom's like, have a good day at school. Uh, she starts going down the street on her bike. You see all these cherry blossoms floating through the air. It's so pretty and nice. And as she is going on her bike, uh, we see something in the bushes next to her. So she rides by on this bike, and then we see one of the bushes kind of move along besides the other bushes. Um, and as the camera zooms in on this bush, what do they see hiding behind the bush? They see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because a shadow cannot be seen. Ah. So we see a shadowy illumination of something, but we have no idea what it is. I mean, seen nor heard. <laughs> Sorry. And we also don't hear him. <laughs> we just see the bush moving. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would rather them not see... Anything okay. except a hopping bush. Okay. For a while. Yeah, so we just see this hopping bush going along the road. Uh, and as this girl is singing and humming to herself and just having this nice, wonderful day, we see the chain on her bike is kind of rattling. And then all of a sudden it snaps. And she pulls on her lever to brake. It doesn't brake. And she says, Uh oh. She starts going down this hill and she's screaming and her eyes are all anime and big and there's sweat drops coming off of her head and she's waving her arms around and they're blurred and you can't see them. She's got like a vein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, has, she has an angry vein and her eyes are huge and her mouth is all chibi and she's waving her arms and she is heading straight towards the port uh, and if nobody stops her, she is just going to fall right into the ocean and ruin her new clothes that she got for school. But a character erupts from the bush, and what you see is somebody who is ninja out, and I will define ninja out as wearing dark clothing and an obstruction over his face, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and leaves just flutter to the ground as like a silhouette of his shape is still there, but he is not. And he's just running, screaming, Hanako! <laughs> Uh -huh. and so he's running very quickly downhill towards her. And uh, she looks back because she heard me scream her name. Mm -hmm. And an 18-wheeler full of fish, because this is a port, starts mm -hmm. reversing and she's going towards it. I'm a little out of reach. And that bike is going pretty quickly. So I take my shuriken and I throw it in an attempt to deflate the back tire to slow her down. And so I do it. Do I have to roll for that? Yeah, go ahead and roll. Okay. We'll have our first roll of the game. So, <laughs> you roll whatever I wrote down under roll. You don't add two to that because it's already added right, right. in. I hit! It's 12. 12? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. So, you you sling the shuriken and it like goes oh. in this curving arc and hits her bike right in the right place that you needed it to. And, like, let's see. How would this happen? It would deflate the tire so it would slow down her. her okay. So her tire goes, and she deflates. She doesn't deflate. <laughs> <laughs> this has got Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka up in here. Uh, and the bike kind of falls on its side, and she, like, for a second is floating in the air, and we see this all-white screen, and we see, like, the black silhouette of her, like, falling from the, the bike, and, ah! What happens? And then my character jumps out, catches her, and lands on the ground, and they slide to a halt. Okay. And she looks up and she has like the red lines underneath her eyes and it's like all soft focus. She says, uh, who, who, who are you? 
no one. And I just run off. <laughs> and there's like, I'm just, I'm just like running off with my backpack on. Yeah. And, and there's like, you, you just see these twigs and leaves sticking out of everywhere, just kind of flying off of me. And I would love it if something happened at the school where I had like twigs and leaves. So I love just, it. Is it a Naruto run? Yeah, oh, it's yeah, always, you, always a Naruto run. Yeah, so when you were booking it after the bike, your arms were like way behind you. Okay, <laughs> of course. That's how I run now. <laughs> In real life? You're just going to see me on campus late for class. <laughs> But anyway, she she watches this mass ninja with twigs sticking out of his backpack <clears throat> running away, and uh, she says, "Huh, that was so strange." Well, I guess I'll just get my bike and go to school. And she picks up her bike and she gets on it and she like goes forward a little bit and she then she falls down on her right side, and you see this anime sweat drop come down the back of her head. Uh, we are in front of that school where it was ringing earlier. And there is a lone vehicle standing out front, not standing, sitting out front uh, as all these people are walking inside to school. Uh, and we zoom in and we see an older man with a lab coat on. Uh, and next to him, we see what? Or whom, I should say. Um, we see Ukiyo Nori, who mm -hmm. just goes by Nori. Mm -hmm. And she's really nervous about her first day of school. And she says, Father, I don't know if I can do this. What if all of them think that I'm strange? She reaches, or he reaches out and puts his hand on your hand and he says, Daughter, there's nothing strange about you. You are wonderful and, and beautiful and, well, just remember all those books that you've read and all the adventures and, and fantasy therein and this is your own adventure, Nori. Okay. Thanks, Father. I'll see you after school. Okay. And Be careful, and don't hang out with any roughhousing kids. Okay. She gets out of the car, and she starts walking up towards the school, and she pauses about halfway and looks back at him, and he kind of waves her forward with his hand, and she turns mm -hmm. around and continues walking, and... Yeah, and then he, he drives away with, and we see her little... Or, no, he, get, he, like, waves you on, and you're like, yeah, okay, I can do it, and you walk into the school, and then... He, like, turns away, and he has, like, the depressed lines on his face, and it's all dark, and he's like, <laughs> and then he drives away. <laughs> uh, next scene. Now we are inside the school. Uh, we are in a dojo of sorts, and uh, we see some young boys, not in their usual outfits, but they are in white athletic shorts and white shirts, uh, and they all have kendo sticks, and they are all in a circle around another person who looks very different from them. Uh, who do we see standing in the middle of this circle? You see Eddie Carlisle. Um, he is an older student, uh, and he kind of runs this little martial arts kendo dojo mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and he's looking at all of the students, and, he, and, he, and he's, uh, he's kind of giving the lesson. And he's basically saying, the first rules to kendo is to not allow your opponent to strike you on a weak spot. Uh, protect your heads, your necks, and any other vital organs. Uh, if, if necessary, use your arms or legs to block these, these strikes. So, Sensei Eddie, we go like this, and one of the kendo kids like holds up his kendo stick in the completely wrong way, and it's just like behind his head and over his left shoulder. He's like, like this? Uh, Eddie whips out his stick and just wraps him on the shoulder. <laughs> 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 and then we see, then we see this kid fall on the ground. And he's just like frozen and his arms are splayed out and his legs are splayed on. He's like, oh! And he has a little dizzy circles on his eyes. And he says, Your form was all wrong. We'll work on it, on the next, on it during our next lesson. Yes, yeah, Sensei. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, and about that time, uh, the doors to this dojo just fling open, and we see a crew of about 21 boys step into the kendo club. Uh, they are all in baseball attire. They have their baseball shirts, uh, cleats, caps, and they all have baseballs slung over their shoulders. Or not, not baseballs, <laughs> bats. <laughs> they just have... <laughs> They just have Bags sacks of baseballs <laughs> slung over their shoulder. We need your kendo sticks, nerds. No, they step in and uh, the star of the 
Shimpy Junior High baseball team steps in, Ichiro Otani. Uh, and his muddy cleats, you know, usually you take off shoes when you enter into a dojo. He has not taken his off. They are muddy cleats, and he steps onto the, um, it's not wood. I guess it would be like T- the paper like mat. mat. Yeah, the tatami mat. The and he steps mat. on it, and like the mud gets everywhere where he steps. And he says, you kendo nerds, you'll never be as great as the baseball team. And then they all throw up their baseball bats and they all like strike this pose uh and um one of the kids not the one that you hit and is laying on the ground says hey we're cool sensei eddie is teaching us life lessons and ichiro throws back his head and laughs loudly goes if you were in baseball you'd be something you'd be cool like me and the rest of the baseball team and they strike that same (laughs) pose with all their bats (laughs) I want to go watch Eddie right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Seriously. Eddie doesn't turn around. He's facing away from them. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he lowers his kendo stick to, toward the ground and just uh, quietly says, if you would please remove your shoes. Hmm. I think I'll remove more than my shoes. And he just kicks with his feet and the mud piles up where he was standing. He says, let's go, guys. I'm feeling a little lame just being here. And then they all turn and walk out, and they slam the doors behind them, leaving all their muddy footprints all over the tatami mat. Or tatami. Sorry. Oh, Master, they've left mud all in our dojo. What what do we do with all this mud everywhere? We'll use this as a lesson in cleanliness. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And cleanliness will allow us to keep control of our surroundings. That will be our lesson for today. That's an excellent lesson, Sensei! And they all grab these cleaning supplies and start cleaning. And the one that you hit on the head is just not holding the broom right and is like <laughs> brushing <laughs> the wall. He's like scraping the floor. Yeah. With <laughs> yeah, he's holding it the wrong way. And he's like sweeping it with the, the wood and edge of the, the broom. And uh, we see, like, the anime sweat drop come down Eddie's face as he exhales and watches his team clean. So, we go back to the school, or the exterior of the school. The bell rings. Uh, we see all these school or classroom doors shutting. Uh, and we see the three characters that we just met, Nori, Eddie, and, well, actually, a new kid that we don't recognize, but he has a, sti- uh, a twig in his hair. And they're running down the hall. Uh, and... As they are getting to their first period class, the door slams shut in their face. I bang on the door. (laughs) It's not even time! The bell hasn't rang yet! The door slides open, and standing there is Mrs. Gurashi. She is an older teacher, very mean. Her eyes are, like, on opposite sides of her head. She looks like a beta fish, (laughs) but she's this old, decrepit woman... She looks like a frog eating another frog, and she looks at you and says, You're late. Uh, 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 sorry, ma'am, but uh, it's the first day of school, and we were just really confused as to where to go. We even went and talked to one of the hall monitors, right? And he didn't know where the class was either. Right? I'm sorry, Miss Garashi. Um, we, we just got lost. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> and and I, just you see the lines like across my <laughs> eyes of just anger. And Sorry, Eddie, Mr. Eddie's eyes just have the shadow. Over yeah. Them. <laughs> oh, she's got amnesia or something. Come on, no, you remember? I, I remember everything very clearly. I knew exactly where the classroom was, but I had to stop and get a drink of water. <laughs> oh, you idiot! I'm just thinking things right now. Yeah, so we see, like, <laughs> the lines across uh, Zuchi's face and the dark eyes on Edward. Uh, no, Edmund. Eddie. 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 And um, Mrs. Garashi says in her gravelly frog voice, You know what happens if you're late to class. Go to the library. And then the door just <laughs> slides shut again. So, yeah, uh, late students... Go to the library. 
for the rest of the day, and that is the punishment that Shimpy Junior High enforces. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so you all uh, morosely make your way to the library. Um, Wait, is Hanaka in that class? Sure, Hanukkah is in that class. In fact, if you looked around, <laughs> if you looked around, Mrs. Miss Garashi, you saw Hanukkah sitting, like, just with all her stuff, just happy as can be by the window, uh, and then the door slammed shut in front of you. I feel like I have to be in there then, like, as a character knowledge. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Shouldn't I? You could definitely try to get back in there. Okay, but first, we That's go fine. to the library. Yeah, and uh, you're greeted for, by a teacher who is much not like. Mrs. Godashi. This is Miss Han, and she is a younger teacher, very pretty. She has, you know, come here. What's wrong with you? Where is my super suit? Where is my super suit? <laughs> come here, my baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so you see Miss Han. She is the exact opposite of Mrs. Garashi. She is young, pretty. She has her hair up in a tight bun, but it's a little messy. And she has these um giant glasses and you can't actually see what her eyes look like um she's kind of cute in a bookish or nerdy way um and she sees you and says oh were you all late to class the first day just 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 well the punishment here at shimpy junior high as you all know is that now you have to stay in the library for the rest of the day i don't see how that's much of a punishment (laughs) <laughs> I like you. What is your name? My name is Nori. Oh, it is nice to meet you, Nori-chan. And yours? Eddie. And yours? Zuchi. <laughs> okay, well, the three of you, I have a special task for you. If you would follow me. She walks to the back of the... Um, just like that. I was doing finger things. Uh, And she walks to the back of the library, and she opens up this room, and there is just piles and piles of old, moldy books. Uh, The shelves are crammed. Some are empty. It's obvious that this is in the process of moving some stuff to this new back room. Uh, And there's just stacks of books everywhere. And she says, I would like for you to take all of these books and put them on the shelf. And since you'll be here for the rest of the day, I think you'll be able to complete this. I'll be at my computer, cataloging books and doing other boring librarian things if you need me. She bows and then shuts the door and walks out. What do the three of you do? Nori just gets straight to work. She's taking it very seriously and like is very diligent in doing it as quickly as she can. I love it. So yeah, you're, you're just grabbing books and looking at the title, looking at the spine, and you might even see that some are dusty and you dust them off and mm-hmm. then you put them tenderly and gently on the shelf. Uh, what about Eddie and uh, Zuchi? Eddie starts looking through the books and grabs a few and starts reading. Okay. Uh, Zuchi? Zuchi, not on purpose, but because it'd be funny, immediately starts climbing the pile of books that she's trying to sort through <laughs> and like even steps on the one that she's grabbing to, to start to get up. Oh yeah. And once I get on the, the pile of books, I'm like looking around for vents um, to escape. Yeah. So you, you crawl up on the top of these books, right as Nori is like grabbing a book and she's like trying to take it out from under your feet. And then, uh, this figure pops up in between the both of you and says, well, hi. <laughs> and you both like go, Wah! <laughs> Uh, This kid uh, is obviously a student, uh, but he has this disheveled black hair, chubby cheeks, and he has these giant glasses, just like Miss Han, and you cannot see his eyes. Well, hi! Welcome to the back room! My name is B! And he holds up these (laughs) victory fingers, and he says, uh, Oh, what what are y'all doing here? We were late, so our punishment is to organize these books. Oh, you know what? I don't see that much as a punishment. That's what I said. It is! <laughs> I think it's terrible punishment, and I'm getting out of this stupid place right now. Oh, you funny man. And he, like, pats you on the back with his hand fully extended. No one gets out of the library. And he, like, focuses on you. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I keep looking. <laughs> yeah, we see Zuchi in the background, like, climbing on the books and the shelves. 
like pulling on ceiling tiles and stuff. <laughs> Eddie had glanced up and was watching what was going on, but he just kind of looked back down at his book. Okay. Well, like I said, my name is B, and I guess I'm kind of in charge of this book room. I, I do all my studying back here, and in fact, I've put most of these books up here. Um, but it's so good that you're here because I have to go take a load of books to another class. So if you can keep doing this, I can run those books to those classes and be back and we can be finished with this in no time. Oh, and if you find any really weird, interesting books, let me know. Because, like, I'm all about that. <laughs> Anyways, bye. And, like, he opens the door, slams it shut, and you hear his feet going... Eddie... Finds an interesting page, looks at it for a second, closes the book, puts it in his backpack, and then starts helping more. Okay. Zuchi. I am upside down, <laughs> grabbing an AC vent, like with my feet on the ceiling, and like pulling down. <laughs> Come on, stupid vent. Ah! And then I'm going to imagine that I fall and crash into a pile of books. Oh, you do. And you totally <laughs> knock like all the books at Nori and... <laughs> I almost said Ken. That was weird. Uh, Eddie uh, are working on and just knock them all to the ground. <sighs> He's like the, the, the like over exaggerated <laughs> yeah. sigh where like a little white puff comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I just <sighs> defeatedly accept my fate and start begrudgingly helping so that we can just get finished. Okay. Eddie stands up and he, he's got a weird look in his eye mm-hmm. and he just kind of stares at uh, what was your character's name? Uh, Zuchi. Zuchi. Just stares at Zuchi and says, Are you kidding me? What What were you thinking? You could have hurt yourself. I did hurt myself, first of all. And second, I need to get out of here. <laughs> Why would you need to get out? This is our punishment. Live with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie kind of shakes his head for a second and then just looks around confused. And then goes like tr- starts going back to work. Hmm. Okay. Um, and right at this moment, the door slides open, and the principal of Shimpy Junior High steps in. His name is Principal Oroka. Principal Oroka. Uh, and he says, "Oh, good, good, good. I'm so glad to see my students diligently working and doing their punishment like they should." Because as everyone knows, if you're late to class, you have to spend the rest of day in the library. Anyways, I would like to introduce you to a new student. And he steps to the side, and they see, standing in the doorway... Panya is just, like, timidly standing, kind of, um... I guess solemn is the best way to describe him. He's just standing there, uh, and he just kind of looks up at everyone... He's like, hi. Yes, this is our new student. Uh, pan yo pancake. What was it? <laughs> Panya neko. Ah, Panya neko. Well, uh, he's going to be here for the rest of school day because he's a new student. And as everybody knows, new students must spend their entire first day in the library <laughs> while we make their <laughs> schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he turns to Pena and says, You have a good day, Pancake. And then he <laughs> do, 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 walks and uh, leaves the library. Um, so now all four of you are together for the first time in the, uh, the back room of this library with all these moldy books. You have a weird name. Who names their kid Pancake? What is your name? Not Pancake. <laughs> Clearly. I'm so glad that I could be stuck in this room with you. <laughs> Whatever, Pancake. I just get back to the books. <laughs> <laughs> and so as a... Pena, do you join them or do you just kind of stand in the doorway? Pena sta- stands in the doorway, looks at them, and he just mumbles to himself, frivolous things that people do these days. Yeah. And just walks over to the bookshelf and starts like looking at the books and pulls out um a book that's like uh arcane magic or something Mm -hmm. and then just kind of slumps down and starts reading it okay 
Uh, Nori, as you are digging through a pile of books, you pick up one book that is much bigger than all the other ones that you have been messing with. Uh, it is leather bound, uh, and it looks just ancient. The pages on the inside are almost falling apart. Uh, and so you pick up this book and you feel some weight to it, both figuratively and literally. Um, yeah, so you have this giant book of whatever in your hands. Okay, well, I guess I would start flipping through it and maybe try to get some idea of what it is, like, unless the title is too worn or something. Um, okay. what, what is the title? Um, that's a good question. It is... Ancient Lore. Obscured. Yeah, can't actually, make it out. no. You uh, don't even know what language this is really written in. Uh, so you look at the title and you're like, oh, this looks like an interesting book. What is its title? You can't even tell. So you open it up and you see more of this script on these yellowed pages. Uh, and it looks like there are equations and drawings and diagrams, but you cannot understand what any of this book means. Um... Pena, as you are reading through your book, you your nose kind of wiggles a little. And you look up, and you see that Nori is holding a book that you take immediate interest in. And so Pena, like, hops up and just runs over to her mm-hmm. and just yanks it out of her hand. Okay. Yeah, so you just, yoink, take this book out of her hand. And she looks a little bit alarmed, but she didn't freak out or anything, and she just says, you startled me. <laughs> yes. Where did you find this? It was on the shelf. Hmm. And I just like look at her and just what? And just walk away to my corner. <laughs> and this is a book that should not be in this library and in fact shouldn't be in, in this realm of existence. Uh, it is very dangerous. Um yeah, you have no idea why it is in this library. In fact, you're not even quite sure that you should be able to touch it or if anyone should be able to touch it. <laughs> but you just did. Yep. But I just did. Yep. <laughs> and it's just all in your hands. And then my brain explodes <laughs> with knowledge. Yes. I just I I think honestly for my character, he would um just open it up and start reading it to gain the knowledge in order to uh, destroy it later uh, since he doesn't have the tools with him to do anything. Okay. Um, okay. So as you're reading it, um, the everyone else just kind of gets back to whatever they're doing. Nobody really cares or notices about the book that this new kid just snatched out of Nori's hands. Um, but the door slides open and you see the cart kind of creak back in and you see B kind of poke his head around and he says, oh, have you made any good progress? And then B locks glasses with you and you lock glasses with B and B says, Panya Neko. <laughs> Can I help you? Oh, good. You don't recognize me. And he thrusts the cart straight at you. <clears throat> oh, I guess he should roll an attack. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot this isn't City of Mist. I can't just say it and like, now you do things. <laughs> I have to do things too. He's rolling three dice. Woo. Uh, six coming at you. That's good. Uh, now roll your defense. So whatever uh, dice total you have down there for defense. Okay. Six. Mm, okay, so tied. So he throws this card at you, whoever he is. You have no idea. Um, and you jump out of the way. But as you jump, this the book leaves your grasp and flies through the air. And B, with surprising agility for someone who looks as nerdy as he does, leaps from the ground, leaps through the air, and you see, like, the black silhouette with the white background. And, like, you see his glasses flying through the air as he's reaching for this book. And he grabs a book and lands again, and he's all turned away from you with his back holding the, the book. Uh, you cannot see his face or the book that he is holding. 
Eddie looks up and just is bewildered as to what just happened. Um, he's just staring at them, wondering what's going to happen next. Okay. I How's smoke bomb. <laughs> You throw a smoke bomb down? At my feet, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I know something's going to happen, and I, I want to okay. use whatever surprise so, I can. So there's there's like a beat where everybody's just kind of staring, and then you see <laughs> Zucci's hand really quick. Bow! And there's a smoke. <laughs> and right, now you don't know where I am. <laughs> nope. Nobody does. So that's, that's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> How does everybody else react? <laughs> Um, I think Nori <laughs> would look really confused and kind of like go over to where the smoke was and like kind of like run her hands through the smoke and like he's not here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, like, <laughs> he, he should not be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Eddie runs over and grabs Nori's arm to pu- and pulls her ar- around behind him uh-huh. um, and, and just kind of stands in front of her. Just to kind of, just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. I don't think Nori likes being pulled like that. Ooh. So oh. she oh, snap. breaks her arm out and then I don't know what else, what else she does. Slaps him in the face. No. <laughs> like- she may, she probably just like breaks her arm out from him and like kind of retreats a little bit and like okay. is prepared in case he's gonna. Okay. Make- it's like it's yeah, like Star Wars. Whatever. She's like, stop grabbing my arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Panya. Um, basically just cu- comes in, just gets on all fours and just races towards, towards B. B. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this new kid drops down on all fours and starts running like an animal towards B. And B s- very quickly turns around and now that his glasses are gone, you see his eyes are very large and he has golden irises and like little cat slits in his eyes. And he smiles and you see like little, uh, sharp canines in his smile he says, Like the oh. Cheshire cat smile? Yeah, sure, like the Cheshire cat smile. It, like, takes up, like, all his face. That's super great. And he's like, oh, Panya, not today. And then he flicks his wrist, and um, this bubble comes around him, and Panya, like, runs face first into the bubble, and he kind of... Oh. B says, with this, I will be able to resurrect an ancient demon and bring so much destruction to this world. And there's nothing that you, Panya, can do about it. <laughs> and as he's laughing, you see this pink-haired head pop into the back room. And she says, is this where I check out books? And it is Hanako. And B turns very quickly and grabs Hanako by her arm and pulls uh, her towards him and says... This is excellent. Now I have an empty vessel with which to resurrect the demon. And Hanako says, empty vessel? (laughs) And then he throws down this smoke bomb, and there's this red poof of smoke. (laughs) And then as it clears, both B and Hanako are missing. Hanako! End of episode. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Missed Conceptions. We will be back with episode 2 of our OVA adventure on October 30th. If you are a social media person, why don't you follow us on Facebook or Twitter? Uh, We post, you know, back, almost said back to the future. We do not post back to the future pictures. I'm very sorry. That is something we might look into in the future. But what we do post is... What's the word? It's behind the... Yes, behind the scenes. Yes, thank you. Nobody in this room because I'm by myself. All right, let's wrap this up. If you have social media, follow us, Misconceptions Podcast. We post fun things, and you can talk to us and let us know what you like about the show. And in that same vein, please, if you listen to us on iTunes, leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out, really lets us know what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. So, why don't you do that, and uh, keep sharing us. Uh, It's always great when we get new listeners, It's, and I think at about right now, we have 100 listeners. Uh, According to my podcast feed burner from Google, we have about 100 subscribers. And, I mean, that, that seems like a small number in the grand scheme of things, but... 100 of you like what we do enough to subscribe and listen to us on a regular basis, and uh, we, we just really appreciate that. That's really great. So uh, to the 100 of you, 
that was for all of you. Little, little kisses. And you can hug yourself and just pretend like it's me hugging you. Unless you're not into that. And just give yourself a high five. Like Diamond Dallas Page. Self high five. OVA is an RPG created by Clay Gardner. You can buy and download uh, the PDF of the RPG from drivethroughrpg.com. Uh, it's really great. It has a lot of great artwork from Nico Geyer. I hope I said his name right. But anyways, uh, just really great art. Uh, if you like this episode, if you like anime, if you like role-playing games, check this out. It, it's, it's fun. The theme song you heard at the beginning of this episode was composed by, and I hope I say this name right, Sakagami Seuchi? I have no idea if I said that right. But anyways, the title of the song was Rainy Day. I will provide a link down in the description so you can go listen to that song and listen to other songs. He has a lot of great ones. Uh, I knew I wanted to use some of his uh, music, and this was the one I decided on, but there were quite a few finalists for the theme song of Mystery at Shimpy Junior High. So, check out Sakagami Suuchi. That link is down in the description. And of course, the music you're going to hear here in a little bit was composed by Aaron Wharton. You can find more of his music at AaronWharton.net. And that's all for this week's episode of Misconceptions. I hope that you will join us next week. And until then, I hope you all have a wonderful days and keep it nerdy, y'all. Thank you.